In the first movie in this series on how to animate traditionally using Krita, uh, which I will stress uh, all the things I'm teaching you, you can apply in uh, any animation format. You, if you're working Photoshop, I don't care, TD Paint, Harmony, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are hopefully universal principles. Uh, we did this very basic bouncing ball, and I didn't want to do the classic bouncing ball with the arcs and squash and stretch. We wanted to separate each principle. So the first one was timing, spacing, and timing chart links for that movie in the notes below. In this one, I want to add some squash and stretch and start to push this away from the sort of uh, very flat uh, thing that we have right now. And we're going to use some of the digital tools to speed this process up a little bit. So let's do that. And uh, let's stop. So what we have, top ball, the ball at this point, no, no squash or stretch, it's just being held here and then it's dropped. So we go forward. And here, certainly, there should be a squash. So let's do that without a squash. So one way I can do it, I can hit M on the keyboard or L. I've, I have M and L set for my shortcuts for the lasso tool and uh, here. So I can, if it's like an organic object, I can select it. And I have Control T set up to activate the um, transformer layer or selection. You can change the point at which we distort the object around. So we can do that to squash and keep the volume by pushing it out just a little bit and deselect, and now we have from here to here. So the other thing we want to do is to stretch this one. So again, that's, I'm gonna use the, um, the square box for this one. Let's do that. Control T, and I'm gonna pull it down from the top this time, so. That's it. Bit of stretch and a bit of squash. The squash, I think we're losing some volume, so let's deselect and reselect here, and Control T, and again, just pull it. A little more. So now if we pull out and play, you can feel that first impact a lot better now. Like it's really, those small changes have already done a lot. So the other thing too would be on the frame right before the first squash, give it a little squash. So let's go in here and then just stretch it a little bit down and in. Maybe that's too much, let's see. What I'll do instead, I'm going to take this one and stretch that a bit more. Oh, come on. Mm. So that's weird because the first time I did this, <laughs> it crashed at exactly the same part of the process. So uh, I'm wondering, is there something in the uh, tool that causes that? So. Good advice I would have for anybody. Whenever I've had a crash, it really hurts. Um, I always advise myself anyway, but anybody who's listening is get right back to work. Don't stomp off and forget it. You have the, what you have in your short-term memory, so we know exactly what to do. So again, here's how fast we can repair that. Control T here. Get a bit bigger. Done. Deselect. Next one, M, select, stretch. This time, I know I want to stretch it a little bit more, maybe pull it down a bit. The one before, just a little stretch on this one. T, just a slight one, subtle, very subtle. That might be even too much. Okay, there we go, recovered. So um, yeah, like I've had very complex scenes that I've been able to um, recover from. So I'm not going to bother with auto save. I'll just keep going. So here, and then we want a bit of stretch on the way up as well. So just on this one, M, T, just a little bit. Okay. And then it firms up and here on the way down, we might start feeling like a bit of stretch here. Now, a lot less stretch because here we are um, falling from a lower height. The, the more energy, the less energy, the more squash, the less stretch. So zoom out. So the other thing too that it really is catching the eye, right at the end it just dies. So what we want to do is to add a very slight uh, settle, like a little overshoot and settle, like a little tiny squash and settle. So let's see how, how little that takes to achieve. 
So here we go here, here. So what I want to do is to be a bit lazy and copy this artwork onto a new frame. So we have two options. We can right click on this and we can go copy keyframes or clone keyframes. If you clone the keyframe, any change that you make to the first will automatically appear on the second, which is very good if you're doing cycles. Um, but we don't want to do that because we want to change each one. We want each one to be slightly unique. So we want to copy it. So we right click, we right click and copy keyframes. And here we can go paste keyframes. And now we have two different ones. Now it's also copying my frame number. Don't want that. So let's get rid of that. Or that would be confusing. So what I want to have happen now is here we squash overshoot or stretch a little bit and settle. So I want another one here. Actually, I need to copy this and then paste it there. Okay, so this one will be squashed a little. Tiny amount, just enough. And then so squash little very slight up. I mean, you might take it off the ground just a tad. And then we might want to do an in-between settling back into this. So let's actually just make a new frame here, a new in-between, put onion skin on, and we'll draw that. And hopefully that extra drawing will hide the cheat that we've done where we've just used the same line work over and over again. Um, let's just pull these apart. I'll just drag them like that. And don't forget too, this one is an in-between, so let's take the color off. So we don't confuse it with something important. And now play, not too bad. So let's uh, do that again. And you see now at the end, there's that little tiny mini bounce. You just about feel it. It's minuscule, but it just, it stops the whole ball from going. Ugh. So that's pretty much it. Other than a bit of housekeeping, where we go to uh, clean up some of the. Uh, um, oh, why is that not uh, visible there? I think I must have accidentally deleted something down here when I was mucking around. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. So let's go to here. Thirty nine. Oh, there's one. How did one end up there? Okay, I don't know. So I think let's move. Hold on, Alt, Option, and drag one back to here. Because remember, we, we deleted a bunch of uh, exposures as well. So um, I, I wonder did I clone this or not? So let's see. Delete that. Go back to here. I did. I clone that by mistake. So make unique. So you right click, make unique. And now I can turn that back into one. And this is different. So. Okay, so, so let's see, 35, that I presume would be 37, 39. What? Don't know what I did here. Let me delete that. Remove keyframe. Something strange happened here. Okay. Let me get rid of these. Okay, it still feels all right. So we have 37, squash, up, and settle. So I think I deleted accidentally one of my uh, drawings here. I think it's still working though. So anyway, you get the idea. I think it looks fine even as is. I'd add like the other drawing back, but meh. Um, so that is the addition of squash and stretch. And you can see how it's already taken the original clunky, up, down, up, down, and giving it a bit of life. The amount of squash and stretch that you add can be, uh, depends on how realistic or cartoony you want something to be. Uh, the more, in general, the more you add, the cartoonier it's going to be. Uh, I know, I think Eric Goldberg suggests doing almost none, just having it on the impact drawing, because he likes a greater sense of solidity. So honestly, it can come down to the style of your project and how you feel about it. There might be times when you want a lot, or not, and it also depends on what the object is made out of. If it's like a like a soccer ball or an American football, maybe it's more rigid. If it's a path filled beach ball, less so. I'll tell you a little story. Um, when I worked for Bluth, uh, the Bluth studio, Gary Golden told me once that Don Bluth had done a scene on 
I think it was The Adventures of Robin Hood. And Robin swings to the window and there's this beautiful cape animation. And you or I would look at it and go, oh, that's amazing. Or Frank, I think it was Frank or Ollie took one look at it and said, what's that cape made out of? And Don said, I don't know. And then Frank said, well, go back and figure that out and reanimate it. <laughs> so, uh, the because the material property of the cape would affect the timing of the of the scene and how much drag or second reaction it would have. So that's how tough they were. Um, anyway, so it's good to remember that we're not just drawing like lines; we're drawing masses. We're drawing things that are meant to correspond with the thing that exists, and that will change how this animates. If this was a metal ball, I wouldn't squash it at all. If it was wood, maybe you do a little bit just to give it a feel of something. Um, but again, it's a matter of style of the project and your preferences and how you want to go with the project. So, but watch the volume so that when you squash it, it doesn't get too big because that would look really awful. There's no world in which I like that. So that's it. That's squash and stretch. In the next movie, we'll start applying some arcs. Maybe try to fix that mistake and uh, figure out what the hell happened there and hopefully we'll finally get past this blasted ball and do some walks and fun things. All right, so hopefully see you in the next one.